Welcome back everybody to Keto Fi with Cristal. So today we're going to be making a meatloaf Keto Fi version and some garlic mash, cauliflower, and air fried zucchini, and of course a cream cheese brownie with pecans. So let's get started. All right, I have some ground turkey as you can see and I have 80-20 ground beef you know they make a 93-7 but with keto the more fat the better so we want an 80-20 all right so we're going to now you know of course there's always versions there's always ground chicken there's ground pork for those that don't want ground beef, you can just use ground turkey. You can just use ground chicken. For those that are vegan, they do have now a plant-based um, option that is grounds. Of course, I have looked at some of those plant-based options and they are not keto friendly because of some of the vegetables that are in there. When you're on keto, there are certain vegetables that you can eat and then there's some that you have to stay away from. There's also certain fillers that you have to stay away from, and some of those plant-based meats have those items in it that you shouldn't have. All right, so of course, yeah, my hands, of course, were clean, y'all. I know y'all didn't see me wash my hands, but of course, I'm not a nasty person. I have washed my hands. All right, so let me go ahead and throw this away because I can't stand a dirty kitchen. So I have put my ground beef in here and my ground um, turkey in here. Let me get my washcloth wipe my hands because I don't want to transfer any of that to the bottles and things that I'm going to be opening so I have some liquid aminos here which is the alternative to soy sauce and I said to myself well, you got to have an alternative to soy sauce because it said this stuff is still made from soy so I looked at the bottle of soy sauce that I have in the refrigerator and that soy sauce has wheat in it wheat is not keto friendly y'all so get you some liquid aminos they also have coconut aminos all right so of course we're going to remove this little lid thing here just put a little dab we don't want a lot just a dab or do you or you don't want to be overwhelmed with soy okay all right so now i'm going to sprinkle me a little bit of seasoned salt in here a little lowry's a little lowry's just a little bit can y'all see what i'm doing here let me turn this camera on around Okay, now here just a little bit of Lowry's. Y'all know I like garlic powder. So here we go. Again, uh-oh, uh, y'all, I'm getting low on garlic powder. Got to go get me another bottle. So just sprinkle to your heart's desire. Got me some onion powder here as well. Again, sprinkle to your heart's desire. Oh, now y'all know, this don't make no sense. I got the beat my season thing here. But I ain't about to let it go. And y'all know we don't just throw stuff away. Mm -mm. We ain't about to do that. If it can't come out, the next best thing, what we gonna do here? Pop this top off. Get us a knife out. And try to get us a little dab out of there. Mm-hmm, of that onion powder. I don't know what's going on with it. Anyway, anywho, next. So now, y'all know yesterday we had some ground um, flat seed. Today, we got ground chia seed. And what did I say about ground flat seed? Ground flat seed helps you to get to moving if you're constipated. Well, guess what? Ground chia seed does too. So, on keto, some individuals have been known to have an issue with constipation. You need to add more fiber to your diet. Now you can use ground chia seeds, ground flax seed. Make sure that you're eating green leafy vegetables. You can also get metamucil, but if you get metamucil now, and yes, I have some, let me get my bottle. Make sure you get the kind that's keto friendly sugar-free sweetened with stevia can y'all see that and you can use that on keto okay
or you can always get the pills. They not sweet at all. All right, so anyway, anywho, and there's also something called Mag 07 that you can find on Amazon. Now, you can't find that in Walmart, and you can't find it in Walgreens, not that I know of, but Mag, M-A-G-07, is also good for constipation. All right, so anyway, let's put a little bit of this chia seed in here. You don't have to put a lot. You don't want to put a lot. Put that one over to the side. All right, I'm going to crack an egg in here. And in my um, meatloaf, I like to do different things. Now, let me go ahead and tell you, for those that are keto police, carrots are not keto friendly. However, today is going to be what's called dirty keto. I don't want my carrots to go to waste. So, if your children don't like to eat vegetables a lot and you want to sneak some in there, carrots, you can get some green peppers, you can get you some onions, and put it in there real fine like. Can y'all see this? Let me show you how easy this is right here. Little shredder. Shred you a little bit of carrots in there. Now, we're not going to put a lot in there. We're not going to put a lot in here. We're just going to put a little bit in here. Just shred it up real fine, real nice. All righty here. And I might put a little bit more in there. I happen to like carrots. So we're just going to shred a little bit more in here. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Let's go ahead on and knock that off. Now, Onions, like I told you, I love onions, but onions are not keto friendly. I'm sorry to tell you. You still can have them, but you need to have them in moderation. So I just got a little piece of onion here that I'm going to chop up real fine and put in my meatloaf. Children, my children don't like onions, but like I told you, I like onions and it's my meatloaf. So we're just going to chop it up. On my cutting board, of course, that is already clean and dry. Well, it's a little dry since I just rinsed it off. Be careful, y'all. Don't cut your fingers. There ain't no time for you to be going to the hospital after you don't cut your fingers off. So just dice it up real fine. Just cut, 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 cut. You can have it as big or as little as you desire. I don't like to do a lot of cutting, so mine is not going to be too fine. That's about all I'm going to do right now. I'm going to get ready to throw that on in here in this meatloaf pot. Now, I love hot and spicy, so I have me one jalapeno pepper. Now, let me tell you something about your vegetables. Make sure that you have washed them off, please. Don't just get your stuff out the grocery store and bring it on in and start cutting it up and putting it in your stuff. People nasty hands have been all over that. You need to wash your stuff, and I don't mean just rinse it. You need to wash your stuff. Get you some lemon juice and let it soak in some lemon juice and water until all that filth gets off of there. That includes your fruit and that includes your vegetables. Okay? All right. So I've already done that. All right. So we're going to chop up. Now, I can't put much of this jalapeno pepper in here because my children's going to clear out. Their mouth is on fire. So. Half of this jalapeno pepper is going to go in there. And again, just dice it up. Dice it up real fine. And yes, I put my seeds in there. You want to de-seed yours? Have it your way. All right, I'm going to throw that in there. Now, I got me some fresh parsley here. Now, y'all know earlier this year, I was growing some parsley. My parsley came out so beautiful in my little container. And I was using it in the kitchen. It was just wonderful. However, I use parsley a lot. So therefore, of course, that little plant bucket didn't last. So rest in peace to that parsley bucket. So I got this right here from Walmart. Now, you don't want the stems. Cut those stems off and those need to go away. All you want is a little flower. You don't want no stems. 
cut the stems off and throw those away, okay? Cut the stems off and throw those away. Move those stems on out of the way. So now I got my parsley nice and bunched up here, so I'm just gonna cut that up. And try not to cut my fingers and try not to cut my fingernail off because I paid too much money for these fingernails. So, just gonna dice these up as fine as possible. And like I said, it don't have to be too fine. It ain't got to be too fine. Because I don't like to do a lot of cutting, y'all. I told y'all that already. I am not a cutter. Oh, let's try it this way. I've seen the chefs, the professional chefs do it this way. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. We might be working with something here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The knife got to be sharp to do that, though. Okay, so here we go. Let's put this in there. This parsley in there. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I have issues, texture issues, and I really don't like digging my hand in this meatloaf. It's something I ain't never like to do. However, stirring it around with a spoon doesn't help. So I'm gonna have to dig my hands in this meatloaf. Now, I'm cooking for my family, and like I told you, my hands are clean. Y'all just seen me cut up all this stuff, so the only thing that's on my hands is this parsley. So I'm getting ready to dig my hands around in this meatloaf and get it stirred around, okay? All right. Oh! Y'all know what I forgot? Oh my God, I got to clean my hands off. Lord Jesus. Hold on, y'all. Now y'all know... Oh, where's my stuff at? Listen, now y'all know most people put breadcrumbs in their meatloaf. Now... Bread comes ain't allowed on keto, y'all. In case you didn't know. Bread ain't allowed on keto. So, but what is allowed? Pork rinds. Now, they do. You can order this off of Amazon already crushed up. But since I don't have time to order that off of Amazon, I got this bag from Walmart. And guess what I'm about to do? Watch this now. Y'all angry? Some aggression out. Get your bag of poor skins and just bam it. You can get a rolling pin if you too if you want one, but listen, I ain't got no rolling pin, so my hands gotta be. Alright, we almost there, y'all. We almost there. Lord, I done bailed the hole all the way through my bag. So now I'm going to go back and get my little friend in the bowl again. And as it's coming out, this what you got here. Just keep breaking it up. Little things here, just keep breaking it up. You don't want no big pieces up in here now, because you don't want nobody biting into a big crunch of pork skin. They talking about your meat look nasty. Because you got a big bite in here. Okay? So you only need a little bit anyway. You don't need a lot. You don't even have to put none in your meatloaf. You can do meatloaf without it. But, you know, I'm just trying to give y'all some alternatives. So anyway, crunch, 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 and bam, bam, and bam, and bam, and bam. Mm, that big old piece don't want to break. Throw it to the side. All right, so now y'all, okay, so now we're back to munching and munching again. We're back to mi mixing and meshing, mixing and mushing. Make sure you get your meatloaf mixed all the way up, okay? Make sure you get it mixed all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. I mean, this looks like this ground beef and stuff is about to be mixed up. We about to be in business. Okay. All right, so let me get my, my pan, y'all. Let me wash my hands off, of course. Okay, so now I have lined my meatloaf pan with parchment paper. You don't have to, but even when I've oiled my meatloaf pan, meatloaf, meatloaf pans in the past, it still has a tendency to stick. So this time I'm just going to put me some parchment paper in here and go ahead and put my meatloaf in here. Now I forgot to tell y'all, I had my oven on 350 degrees, already heating up for quite some time now. 
So here we go. We're just going to put this meatloaf in here. And why is meatloaf called a meatloaf? Because it's in a loaf pan and it's meat. Hence the name meatloaf. Okay, so here we go. We got our meatloaf in here. I'm just going to open my stove and put it in there. And I'm going to set my timer for about 40, maybe 40 minutes. Give or take a little bit of time, but I'm going to keep checking it, you know, put it on 40 minutes. All right, and set that and forget. Okay, so also on the menu is air fried zucchini. And I'm, I'm, oh, I'm getting tongue tied. I'm not getting ready to cook this right now. It's already sliced up, but what I am going to do is to go ahead and season it and sit it to the side. So, since this onion powder wanted to act the food, we ain't even gonna use it. But I'm gonna use some garlic powder. And like I told y'all, you sprinkle it to your heart's desire. I'm gonna use a little bit of kosher salt. And I love hot, so red pepper flakes. I'm sure it ain't gonna eat none of these, so I can just put as much red pepper flakes on here as I want. Now, I have several oils here. Avocado oil, which is keto friendly. Grapeseed oil, also keto friendly. Extra virgin olive oil, which is also keto friendly. Now, I'm running a little short on the avocado oil, so I'm going to use extra virgin olive oil. And all I'm going to do is drizzle. Y'all see that drizzle? Y'all see? Drizzle. Drizzle this on top of this zucchini. Not drown, y'all, but drizzle, okay? All right, so now that's drizzled on there. And you can put whatever, oh, I forgot to add me some pepper up here. Let's put a little bit of pepper up here. You can put whatever seasonings you want up here, y'all. Now, and I'm going to sit this to the side. Now, <clears throat> there are some seasonings that you need to be real careful with when you're using with keto. And garlic powder and onion powder are, are a couple of those because they are high in carbs. Onions are high in carbs. However... I have consistently used garlic powder and onion powder and I've not had any problems. So, but when you might meet someone who is strict, die hard keto and they're going to let you know their views, don't even argue with them. Just go ahead on. Use it or don't use it. All right, so I'm gonna set that to the side and next we're gonna get the cauliflower ready. Okay, so. We've got this pretty head of cauliflower, as you can see. And one thing I forgot to tell y'all about your meatloaf. Now, some people like to put ketchup on their meatloaf while it's cooking. Some people like to put it on after it's done. Some people like to put it on when it's halfway done. I like to put it on when it's almost done and then pour it on and then put it back in the oven so it can get a little char on it. Well, not a little char, but a little heat to it. Now, when I was keto, doing keto in the beginning, <clears throat> I didn't know about all this sugar and the ketchup and all that kind of stuff. But as I have advanced, I have found out, of course, there's sugar and ketchup. Well, there's sugar in barbecue sauce. There's going to be sugar in anything that has tomatoes in it because tomatoes are naturally sweet. But then you have to look and see if there's added sugar. Now, I have used the regular ketchup all this time and didn't have any problems. So you choose to do what you want to do, whatever's friendly to your budget that's what you do however i did purchase this sugar-free ketchup by g hughes now on the back of here of course it has um now y'all know these reading glasses and i still have to squint to see even in these reading glasses it says i know y'all can't see that it's all right i'm gonna read it to you vine ripe tomatoes concentrate distilled vinegar Modified cornstarch. Now, cornstarch is a keto no-no. I'm just going to go on and tell you it is. Cornstarch is a keto no-no. Salt, garlic powder, onion powder, spices, and sucralose 
Anything in it in a O, sucralose, fructose, galactose, all those are sugars, other names for sugars. And they really are keto no-no. But listen, y'all. You can choose to make your own ketchup. That is not my choice. So therefore, I'm going to choose this, which is sugar-free. Now, again, I tell you, do what is good for your budget. I'm going to put that to the side till my meatloaf is already done. Now, here we go with this cauliflower. Now, y'all know cauliflower has this little root thing on the end. Y'all see that little thing that has to be cut off. So we have to cut that off, y'all. You don't, you don't cook that. So just be careful, start at the base and just kind of work your way around in a circular motion. And please be careful, don't cut your fingers, please. Lord have mercy, because it is not going to feel good for you to cut your fingers. And you ain't going to want no blood on your cauliflower. Who going to want to eat that? You got to throw that away. So listen, go ahead on and let's go on around in a circle. Let's see if I got that thing here now, y'all. Listen. Boop. Pop go the weasel. It's off. Sit down on over to the side. Uh-oh, that went on the floor. Glad that's going in the trash anyway. And break this up. Now, break this on off. Break this on off. Woo! This one's a big one. It's kind of a little difficult to break, but you don't have to break it all the way down because you're going to steam it anyway. But kind of break those little flower things off. All these little things right here go over to the trash, okay? Kind of break these little flower things off. All right. All right. So we're going to break all those little flower things off and those little stems. We don't need all that extra stem stuff. So we're going to get all that off. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do is. My children in here, y'all. Okay, you guys. So I've got my cauliflower in a pot. And I've got uh, half water in here. I do not have the cauliflower covered because I want the cauliflower steamed. I don't want it saturated and boiling. So I just have it covered. So I'm gonna turn my stove on high and I'm gonna cover, I'm gonna cover it and then I'm just gonna let that steam down. And I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, everybody, so I'm back momentarily. So we're gonna go ahead and get these brownies, these keto cheese, keto cream cheese brownies mixed up and popped into the oven with this meatloaf because why shouldn't we? All right, so I found this recipe on Pinterest for a keto cream cheese brownie. And according to the instructions, I'm supposed to have unsalted butter and my eggs at room temperature. So I took my eggs and butter out this morning and set them on the counter. And my butter is nice and soft and pliable. So typically I use Kerrygold butter because it's great for you. It has vitamins, it has minerals, it has a lot of stuff that you can use in it. It also has been defatted. So those who are lactose intolerant may be able to tolerate that butter better. However, when I went to the store, a couple of different stores, they didn't have it. So, of course, I got Land Lakes unsalted butter. You can use any kind of butter that you want. Whatever is on your budget, butter is butter. Never use margarine, okay? Margarine is not keto friendly. So, we're going to pop this butter here into this bowl. And, of course, I have a glass bowl. This glass bowl has been passed down to me from my mama. This was my mama's glass bowl. So you know a lot of baking has gone on in this glass bowl or a lot of mixing up or whatever. Anyway, it says one cup, so two sticks is going to be one cup. So we got one cup of unsalted butter. Now it says one cup of granulated sugar substitute. And of course I've got the swerve. granula which is granulated and it says one cup i don't know if i got a cup up in here y'all but if i don't i got some mock food over to the side to the rescue and we're gonna see what we got here let's see if we got a cup i think we might be good oh oh i think we might be good y'all it's taking my whole bag but listen there's a cup let's throw this on in the trash because that's a done deal 
All right, what's next? We got two thirds cup of cocoa. Now, I don't even know where my two thirds cup is, but I do have a, a one third cup. And I think in math, one third plus one third equals two third. Or at least I think it is. It's going to be today. So let's shake that on up in here. Some cocoa. That's one. Ooh, this might, it might, it might make it. Yeah, we got it. Okay, we got it. That's it for that one. So we can throw that one on in the trash. Okay. And now it says a teaspoon of salt. Now, we should be able to hand measure some salt, y'all. That might be a teaspoon. Throw that on in there. All right, let's mix this together. Well, Lord. Hold on, y'all. Okay, I think I've got this almost mixed real smooth here now. I put y'all on pause because ain't no point y'all sitting up here watching me while I'm just a mixing and didn't have anything to say. So anyway, now, if you perchance happen to have forgot to set your butter out, it ain't no problem. Just pop it in the microwave. It's all right. It's going to be melted. Just don't get it all the way liquidy melted. Just get it a little bit of sauce. I do it all the time. And I bake a lot. And my stuff be just fine. All right, now it says two eggs at room temperature. Now I have my two eggs already sitting out, so we're just gonna crack these eggs. It says add them one at a time and stir. One egg, put that over there. Stir it, oh, oh, a shell in there, y'all. Please don't leave shells in your batter. Take it out when you see it, okay? And nobody don't want to be crunching on your brownies unless they know it's a pecan that's in there or a walnut, okay? So let's go ahead and get this egg all stirred up in here. All right, so now let's go ahead on and add the next egg and try not to put a shell in there this time, Christelle. I think I got it. There we go. No shell this time, y'all. All right, so let's stir this up real good. All right. It's starting to smell like brownies, y'all. It's smelling like brownies up in here. And it's got all this butter in here. I know it's going to be good. You can't tell me nothing else. All right. Now, the next addition is supposed to be the almond flour. Three-fourths of a cup. All right. So, y'all know I showed y'all this almond flour yesterday. And, of course, I just got this from Walmart. I didn't go to any old fancy store and get it. Walmart. And it says three-fourths of a cup. So, I have a cup here. So, just measure out the three-fourths. You ain't got to go out and get a whole three-fourths of a cup. You ain't got to get a measuring cup that say three-fourths unless you're not good at measuring. You know, you just don't fill it up to the top. And that's three-fourths instead of one cup. Okay? All right. So, let's see. Let's make sure we ain't got it full to the top. So, let's see what we got here. I'll pour some in here. What y'all think? That's three-fourths. Pour that on in there. All right. Now I'm going to get this stirred up, and I'll be right back with y'all. Okay, here I am back again. So the next part is your cream cheese. Remember I said get full fat, not low fat. You need fat in keto. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all. Y'all like this head wrap? Now, I got this head wrap from a lady off of Etsy. I saw her on Facebook. Somebody else had purchased this exact same head wrap, and I wanted one. So I'll leave her link down in the comments, of course. And these earrings, you know, listen, y'all, I shop on a budget. I probably got these earrings from the beauty supply store for a dollar or two. I don't know. I don't do all that expensive buying. It's very rare, very, very rare that I expensive buy something. And guess what? I look cute because I make the clothes, okay? This shirt right here, just God. Can y'all see that? Just God. Can y'all see that? Mm. I did this shirt. Yes, because it's just back to cooking, y'all. Okay, so I'm up here trying to get this over my hands, and I know it's not about to happen. So let me get my knife and do a little slit and get that on open. 
Now my cauliflower is over here steaming, steaming up. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit because it's hot over here on this stove. All righty, so let's get this cream cheese open. And remember I told you I have had it sitting out this since this morning, so it is definitely at room temperature. So we're putting that in a glass bowl, another glass bowl, courtesy of my mama. All right. And it says a third cup of granulated sugar substitute. So I've gotten a monk fruit, which of course is keto friendly. Now, I know y'all looking to my, that third cup is dirty. It ain't dirty. I just use this for getting that cocoa out of there and I'm cooking for my household. I'm not about to wash this cup out since I'm just making the same thing as this brownie. It's going in the brownie anyway. So guess what I'm about to do? Sprinkle this, oh Lord, did y'all see all that fly out of there? Jesus. All right, well, there's my third cup, monk fruit. Uh-huh. So, I'm done with that measure cup. It can go in the sink now. Now, be careful with that monk fruit because it flies up like powdered sugar. All right, one egg. Uh-oh, a whole half an eggshell fell in there. Please don't leave any eggshells in your food, y'all. Lord have mercy. Jesus, let me get a, 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 a spatula in here and start stirring it up. So now, and it says... A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now, y'all, do your eye measurement, please. And just pour a little bit in there. That's probably a teaspoon right there. I got some walkings now. Vanilla extract. Let me tell you something. There is the keto police that will tell you about vanilla extract. Now, vanilla extract, some of them are not keto friendly. All those you buy at the grocery store ain't keto friendly. I'm just gonna go on and let you know. You'd have to order the ones that's keto friendly off the internet or go to a specialty store. But like I told y'all, I've been using this vanilla and this stuff and I've been doing keto and I ain't had no problems. Now I gotta do what's friendly for my pocketbook. And vanilla extract is not cheap regardless of what store you go to. So, I'm going to keep doing the grocery store one. But you know what? Y'all can get that keto version if you want. You can, and like I told you, there's going to be keto police that's going to follow you and say you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. Just tell them okay and ignore them. I'll be right back in a minute, y'all. Lord. I'm trying to put y'all on pause, but I don't think y'all want to go nowhere. Okay, y'all, it's time to bring it all together. So we got the brownie mix. I've got my glass dish with my parchment paper in it. Remember, glass dishes are the best. You know, I've only learned that in the past, what, year or so, that we really should be using glass and not plastic but anyway better late than never let's put this all in here let's scrape this in here and it said the recipe calls for a 13 by 9 bacon dish got about all I'm gonna try to get out of there anyway all right so just put pass mash pat push whatever you want to say this down now, you know this parchment paper will get to sliding. Let's try to hold it in place as best you can. And just get it smoothed out here. Just get it smoothed out. Let's get it smoothed out. Now, y'all know I was going to put pecans in this brownie. And here come my granddaughter talking about, Grandma, could you not put a lot of pecans in there? Knowing I love pecans. So anyway. Here we go, y'all. So I'm still just smooth, 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 smooth. Oh, Lord, y'all. My parchment paper is starting to slide down a little bit. So anyway, my fingers are clean. So look, I don't like to do, I don't like, waste not, won't not. That's what I always heard. Waste not, won't not. So put that on down there. Now you got your, your cream cheese. Let's put that on on top. Cause these are cream cheese brownies remember okay now cream cheese swirl brownies so how are we gonna get the swirl crystal spread this around 
and it's gonna be quite easy let me, let me show you how easy it's gonna be yes sir. zoom in here i hope i don't drop this phone i just said i hope i didn't drop the phone and y'all ended up on the floor anyway okay sorry about that y'all but i'm back all right so for the swirl all you do is you see what i got here i've got the brownie mix in there and i've got the cream cheese that's all you do for swirl y'all take it back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth and of course go down y'all see it starting to swirl y'all see that's all it is it's simply like that it ain't nothing fancy don't let nobody make you think it's something fancy it really ain't you can do this with this spatula you can do this with a toothpick look whatever you want to do you can make wheelies and circles or whatever you want to do in here just just do it i'm about to make railroad tracks in mine but anyway okay so now let's smooth it on back out And of course, I don't waste not, won't not. So I'm scraping this off of my finger in here because again, I say I'm feeding my family. See that? Brownies. Pop it on in the oven. It's already on 350 degrees. So you ain't got to turn it on nothing else. All right. See y'all shortly. Okay, y'all. So the cauliflower is good and done. I've already drained all the water off of it. I'm going to throw a stick of butter in here. Yes, a whole stick. I'm going to sprinkle some salt in here. However much you want. A little black pepper. And I'm going to cover that so that butter, give that butter a little chance to melt. And I'll see y'all in a little bit. Now, I have already added my ketchup on top of my meatloaf. It, 40 minutes and still was not done on the inside so i've put it on about 20 more minutes i've already added my ketchup on top and we'll see how it goes see y'all shortly okay y'all i'm finally back listen i'm so sorry you know i'm trying to still get used to this youtube stuff so now i think i've got four videos here I'm going to pray to the good Lord that I can figure out how to merge these so y'all don't have to be flipping through four videos. But if I cannot, please know I'm sorry. And tomorrow, it will be one video. That, I can promise you. Anyway, listen. The brownies are done. Here they go. No, I didn't put any pecans in it because my granddaughter begged me not to. But listen, I'm going to have me some pecans on the side. You can always make you up some whipped cream out of um, heavy whipping cream or either the vegan kind that I have. Just put it in, a, in a, a mixer. Whip it up on high. You can add a little bit of sugar. You can add some vanilla extract. You can also add um, some cinnamon. However you want to make it taste better delectable delightful and tasteful to you and you can put a dollop on your brownies i'm not going to do that today because listen i already got four videos here that meatloaf i did pop out and i added my um ketchup on top and i popped it back in the oven the cauliflower once it was finished cooking i did drain it and i put a stick of butter in here so what I'm about to do now is go ahead and finish up with this cauliflower. I normally have a masher, but somehow my masher has taken feet and walked away. So I'm going to have to dump it here in my cake mixer. Let's pray it don't fall on the floor. So here we go. Cauliflower. Cauliflower. Cook your cauliflower until it's tender. You don't want to overcook it because you don't want it to be mushy and not flavor flavorful. So we're going to put this blender down. We're going to turn it on. I'm going to shake up my heavy whipping cream. Check the expiration date. It's still good. All right. You can use, like I said, heavy whipping cream, or you can use the vegan one, the silk, that I showed you all on yesterday. Just add a little bit to it. Whip it up. I already added some salt in here. And how we're going to make it a garlic version. Y'all already know. 
garlic powder. A little bit of garlic salt. You can always use fresh garlic if you like. I'm not about to cut none of that up. You can add your little bit of onion in if you want to. Onion flavor. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do. Whip this up real good, you guys. I already have my zucchini in the air fryer. You don't have to cook it in the air fryer if you don't have one. Um, so you can always put it in the oven on 400 or 450 degrees, the zucchini. And put it on a baking sheet and put it in there for about maybe 15 minutes. You don't want to overcook it. You just want it to be done, but you still want it to have a little bit of crisp to it. But of course, like I said, I put mine in the air fryer. Now we just whipping up this cauliflower because it's gonna look like mashed potatoes, y'all. I'm gonna add a little bit of more salt here. Not a lot, but a little bit of do you. A little bit of pepper and I already got my butter in there like I said look that's it turn it off or it splash me off stop the bowl to turn it y'all see that right there mashed cauliflower now you didn't have to add as much liquid if you want yours to be a little bit thicker use less liquid but if you want it to be thin like this just keep modifying just keep adding a little bit of heavy whipping cream that's all you got to do so all this food is ready y'all we're just waiting on the zucchini all right the zucchini is done in the air fryer like i said i just Cook it just a little bit, 10, 15 minutes at the most. I have cut a slice of this brownie. Y'all see how it look? Now the dough is a little wet. I think that's how it always does, but I, I cooked it to the time. I even cooked it a little over the time. But anyway, we're gonna taste it. Lord, we thank you for this food that we're about to receive and for the blessed hands that has prepared it. In your mighty name, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. So, I said keto cream cheese brownie with pecans. Of course, like I said, my granddaughter wouldn't beg me not to, but here we go. I can always put my own pecan on top. Let's have a little taste. Okay. All right. Y'all. I done told y'all, I am completely honest. This tastes like a real sinful brownie. You cannot tell that this is a keto brownie. Do yourself a favor and try it. All right, y'all. Keto fire with Cristal. Oh, keto if fire with Cristal. Thank y'all for joining. I love y'all. See y'all tomorrow.